Hello, hi! If you've not been living under a rock, you probably know by then that Unity released the version 2018 of their engine, and it includes a lot of cool features from the Text Mesh Pro right in there, the Pro Builder, and the Shader Graph, and a lot more. Um, but I want to go over the Shader Graph today because I've been watching this video, a one hour long video um, from a conference at GDC. So Unity was over there showing off a Shader Graph editor, and um, it was long. <laughs> so what I wanted to do here is to make sure that we can go over that quickly. So the goal for today is to do the exact same thing he's done. We're going to tackle the shader graph. We're going to have a look at how we work with this thing, talk about the nose a little bit, and actually reproduce the same exact result as he's done, but uh, we're not going to do it in a conference manner and we're going to do it fast. So if you guys are here for quick learning, let's get right into it. All right, so to get started, I'd like you to pay attention to the create new project window, this one over here. Make sure you have at least Unity 2018 point something at the time of this video, I'm at 2018.1, anything beyond that will of course work. And uh, let's have a look, so when you create your project, at the moment, we only support the lightweight PBR um, rendering pipeline. So for, for the use of Shader Graph, at the moment, and I'm really uh, putting the emphasis on at the moment because they plan, and they've said that in the talk, they plan on implementing it for eye definition as well and they also support unlit, um, of course, you'll want to choose this one. And when you create your project from here, it is going to import a big scene with a lot of assets in it. It's going to give you like a preview project um, in which I stripped out everything, but the setting over here and also the material decided to keep the skybox material. Now, do note that you can do that on your own. You can create a project from scratch and actually import these, create these settings, um, but you're going to have to include the lightweight rendering pipeline and if you are starting from scratch you can actually go up here under window package manager and this is cool this is actually a way for unity to split their project in different little chunks that you can add to your project only if you need them so in my project currently I have analytics uh, standards but what i really need here is the render pipeline and the shader graph is included in that it's actually part of the render pipeline the uh, the lightweight render pipeline if you go under all you will find it right here, shader graph. But we don't need this one because it is included in render pipeline. And like I said, um, that's the way it is at the moment. It's most likely going to change in the future when the shader graph is supported for all type of lighting. But let's actually get started with the actual shaders. All right, so next up, we have a small observation. Since I'm losing the, the lightweight um, render pipeline, I actually can't use a normal standard shader. If you have a look over here, this is my mesh. It's actually using standard and it has an albedo. Even if I go under legacy, do a say um, normal diffuse, it has a texture on it and it still doesn't do anything. Oh, and about the character, it's something I found under the asset store. So under 3D assets for a price of $0, I found the red samurai. This is what I'm using, by the way. Okay, so. If we can't use legacy shader diffuse, if we can't use a standard one, well, we have to use the lightweight render pipeline. And then you'll also find um, the, uh, the the standard over here if you'd like so. Now it does not contain as much variety as the, uh, the standard uh, lighting mode, but with the shader graph, to be honest, you'll have fun creating your shaders. So you'll be able to make them on your own. Um, so really depending on what you want, uh, for this kind of asset, I think I'll go for simple lighting. We could go for PBR. I'm not a big PBR fan, I like to create more of a uh, cartoony style games, but it's up to you, it's right there if you want to. Uh, you can tell the difference if I say, if I put that on PBR. So you're going to have that nice little rim all the time, um, it's going to look metallic a little bit, and I'm actually going to strip that for mine. Okay. Okay, so the goal of this video is going to be to show you exactly what a guy did, or the representative did. On the talk but we're going to be doing it quickly and we're going to be efficient so let's go ahead and start by creating a new shader so right click create we're going to go under shader and we're going to have to use a pbr graph i'm going to name this player and we are going to actually right away you can assign it to your players so i'm headed on the mesh right now this is what i want to change i will go under my lightweight pipeline and it's save under graph right here graph player and that is my mesh at the moment. Now, if you see it, it has the rim lighting that I just removed um, by putting it on simple light. So let's go ahead and change our shader. We're gonna start just by doing simple stuff, right? Double click on player. This will 
open up the shader graph. And we are going to maximize this window because we want to be able to see what is going on in here. We can move around by holding middle mouse. If you scroll down and up middle mouse, you can zoom in and out. And that's pretty much it. Here you have your master node. This is where your result is going to be output. You can see it in some kind of little sphere preview. And you can also have a look at a more um, bigger, at a bigger preview on the bottom right hand side. And this one's cooler because you can right click on it and change that into a capsule, cube, or even a custom mesh. In our case, let's do the player. So we can see the result on the player's cloak right away. Uh, reason doesn't have the head is because that's a different mesh. So I already told you guys, I don't really like that little lighting on the side. So I'll actually go back and put my smoothness back on zero so we can have the simple lighting back. Now, this is going to be showing on your project only when you click on save asset. So let's do that and see the change. Here it is. Okay, the head's going to say like this because I'm not going to make another shader for it. We'll be able to tell the difference at the end. So in the video, what he did next is he added a nice rim lighting effect to the whole mesh by adding a Fresnel effect. However, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to add a diffuse first. Uh, I think diffuse was the logical first step. So let's add a texture to this thing first. Now, if you're not familiar with these uh, terms over here, so albedo, normal, emission, metallic, smoothness, um, I recommend that you get a little bit familiar. Actually, you don't really have to since you're going to learn them as you experiment. But albedo is basically the um, the diffuse channel, the texture channel. That's the data you put directly on the UV of the mesh. So let's go ahead and have a look. It's already linked to something. It's already on a default over here. And that default is a simple color. So we can modify the color just like this. Though we are not going to be using a simple color. We're going to be using some texture. And to add a texture on here, we have to create some more nodes. So we have to start implementing some nodes in here. You can do so by right clicking create node or pressing on spacebar. Now there is a lot of stuff and it's going to be a lot of fun to look through all of them. However, like I said, I'm going to stick to the, um, the thing that he did on the video and I'm also going to be revisiting that in a future video and on a stream this Saturday. So we have to go under input. We try to put something we created. So a texture we created, let's go under input. And there's a bunch in here and I can't wait to test them all. But for now, we're going to stick to texture and we have a texture to the asset. That's what we have. So down here, we have to create or actually not create, but choose our texture. In this case, that will be the body diffuse. And now we're going to try and output that to the albedo, but it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because texture has a little bit more uh, complex data than just the three albedo channels. So let's see what kind of data it holds. We're going to click here on the output and when we don't know what kind of output it gives you can just drag it and put it anywhere and now the create node is going to filter what you can actually put in there so do you just want to output the uvs you just want to output the texture itself which is what we'll do or the normal or a normal map actually <laughs> so let's go ahead and go under input that was my phone by the way and we'll do a normal sample texture to the and you start seeing it right here now what's really cool about this is that you can actually sell, you can actually tell what kind of output this has. You can put only the red channel if you want. So you have something like this. You'll have only where the red color is, or you could put only the green. As you can tell, there's way less green in this, but there's still a bit. Then blue and alpha, as you can probably tell by looking at this, there is no alpha in here. So you won't be able to see any color, but it's really cool the way you can just put them through single channels. And hopefully this gives you some kind of optimization idea. Maybe you could create a texture that um, is optimized by having four different channel uh, used for four different things. So maybe think about something like that in the future. That could be nice. Okay, so we have our albedo or diffuse put on our texture. Let's save this, have a look. And we're back to normal. Now, we're going to add the Fresnel effect. So he added a rim lighting as part of the emission map. So that was fairly cool. And we're going to do the same. Now have a look at the emission map right now. It's just something you put on top of the whole mesh at the moment. It's not really cool. It's not really good looking. However, what he did is he added a Fresnel effect. So we're going to press on spacebar, start typing Fresnel, and here it is. Now we really don't have much at this moment. We only have this one channel as an output. So you say it says output one, and it's just a alpha channel. But if we just drag it under emission, 
Now every time you create a node, especially an effect node, it would be fairly fairly cool if you have a look on the input because the input is what makes something out of that. And they always have defaults. So in this case, the default is world space on both field. But do know that we're going to be exploring that a lot more on Saturday. We can create effect that would only like a rim effect that could only show up from one side or if you're looking from above. We can do all of that controlling these and it is quite uh, it is quite exciting to know that you can do that, right? Let's go and put that on something um, like three. And the next thing that he's done is he actually cut the link over here. He did not like to have a white rim. We can add a color to this rim. Okay, now how do we sneak in some color in between here? We only have the black and white and gray, you could say, value in here. But that's not enough. We'd like to put an, an actual color on this rim. Well, let's start by creating a color node. And that color could be a nice red or something like that. We're actually going to take this value, the black and white value, and multiply it. So again, a new node, this one's called multiply, and we'll multiply these two values. So red in this case, I'm actually going to drag that, so a full channel into a single like that, and it's going to change. So it's going to change and accept this over here. So this one has to also be um, an output with full. And you'll see that if we just put that in here, it's going to adapt. And that's our new emission. I love the way you can have a preview so easily like that. It's amazing. Um, let's have a look at this, right? So if we modify the color, we modify the output right away. I'm going to put like a very whitish red like that. And now we can put that under our emission. And voila, we have some colors. We can always play with the rim power over here at the end. And we could also um, modify which kind of lighting you want directly on the color. However, we can only do that through here, through the shader graph. What if we wanted to change that in the middle of the game? If we have a rim color that's based on the player's color, uh, say he's player one, well he's red, player two is actually blue, and, and so on. So we can actually do that by adding parameters. Just like back in the days, you can have access to parameter directly in Unity on the right hand side over here. If you click on the material, you'll see it right away. And uh, this window is quite big, yeah. <laughs> So on the right hand side over here, uh, you can see we have a couple of these things. And if I save my asset on the other thing, so that's my material, right? This is our graph. Uh, we have the, the actual texture over here, but we can't change it. So that's really important. We can't change the diffuse and we can't change the color from here. And that kind of sucks. So we need to have some property, some editable property. And by the way, the texture seems like it's editable, but it's really not. So if you click on it, you can't select a new one. This one is like, hard baked in <laughs> but let's go ahead and actually add those so our player can control that from first the inspector but also in the game by having a reference to that very specific shader so for properties and reference you do outside of there you can use the blackboard and the blackboard really serves as a big way to put some input in there so let's go ahead and fix the color first let's add a new color this could be the rim color. And now I can go ahead and change that to say yellow now. And it's going to ask you the same question as it asked you there. So rim and HDR. All right, so we got rid of our color, the actual hard-coded color. Now, how do we add this new rim color is what I called it. Well, just like we create a new node, press on spacebar and start typing in the name. And you'll see property, two dot, and then the name of your property. I can just take that, put it here and we are already good to go. Now the player, not the player, but like the user designer can actually modify that directly from outside. So let's do a save asset, go back to my project, and now we have the rim color under the property on the right hand side, and I can actually play with it right here and you'll see the change happening in real time. Like I said, this can also, um, this can help you a lot when you are in the middle of the game and you have a reference to your shader. Okay, so I'll leave that on really bluish color in this case. It really doesn't look good, I just realized. Okay. Crap. Okay, back to work, back to work. Uh, we're going to do the same thing really, really quickly for the texture asset because right now it's really hard baked in. So create a new texture. That'll be my diffuse. You can reorder that by simply dragging them on the blackboard. Now with that said, property diffuse and I can drag and drop this in this field over here. 
So I remove what I previously had. And we can also, if you want to have a default texture, you can also do that right here. Save the asset. And we're back to what we had, but now everything is editable and you can actually change it directly in the inspector. Also, instead of actually typing in the name of your property, um, when you go ahead and you try to create, say, the diffuse like we just did, you can remove that and you can just simply drag and drop it after creating it and that will do the same exact thing. It's much faster. Okay, next thing, next thing on the talk is that he created a dissolve effect. So he was dissolving his mesh um, using a slider and we're going to do the exact same. Now, the way he done that is by using a noise texture. Now, if you want to do a really, really nice dissolve, you can use um, an actual texture you've made for that. So you design what kind of dissolve pattern you want to have. But in his case, he didn't have one. So he created a simple noise texture. Now, um, uh, we have that built in in Shader Graph. That's, that's quite cool. Uh, and you can actually define the strength of it if you want to. You can modify the scale. Let's put ours on about 20. And that's extremely cool because you already have a texture information right there and you can do whatever you want with it. So whatever you want, you can do it with that. Uh, if you want to do a multiply on it, just like we did and create a red texture instead, we can do that. We can do a multiply. Um, not that it's going to be useful in our case since we need the black and white data for dissolve, but just to let you know that everything is really possible. Now what he's done in talk is he actually used a step function just to make sure there's only black or white data on the on the actual sheet because you'll need that for dissolve effect. Uh, you're gonna need to know if the pixel is lit or it's not lit, and you can you can only have zero and one. Um, having an alpha value kind of sucks in there. So here is what we do. That's exactly what he did. He used a step, so everything around that um, by changing the actual power of the step you'll see everything in here is only black or it's only white. Uh, there is no in between. So that could be a nice effect. You might like it or you might just want to have something else. You might want to have a dissolve that um, has a transparency to it, a an alpha value, you could say. But I think it's going to look weird with the rim lighting. <laughs> so um, having that said at this point, now is the time to feed that into the alpha channel. Okay, now we have our step texture. It's not animated, nothing is really uh, moving here. It's only, you know, these values are just what we put. Um, but let's actually feed that into our PBR master. Let's actually drag that right under the alpha clip threshold. And now we won't see anything until we actually put the alpha on 0 0.5 or 0. And I'm gonna be super honest here. I'm not quite sure what is the threshold needed for alpha. So I'll leave it on 0 0.5, just like he's done it in the video. And now you're going to receive your, um, your actual effect by changing the power of your step. And you can see it real time changing um, down below over here. So using this texture, you'll be able to see what is going on exactly as, as it's going on. Now, if you want to be able to control this, you probably know it already. You have to create a property. Let's go ahead and add a vector one, which stands for a normal float, a normal um, int, whatever you want for that case and we'll call it the dissolve uh, ratio. So at zero, we have a dissolve ratio that um, would be in this case, not apparent. And if you go up to one, then in this case, it is fully apparent. And what's really cool over here is you can change that to a slider and you can have a minimum and maximum. So when you go inside of the inspector after saving, of course, you'll be able to see this with a dissolve ratio. And it goes like that. And now we're able to dissolve the body. And there is a two face. Um, I guess you can't see it over here. You can see the behind of his leg and you can see the mesh on this side. And that's not really cool. Maybe you don't want to have that. Uh, maybe you do. It's really up to you at that point. But if you go back on the shader graph, you have the access to the two sided option, which then if I save, you'll see has created a lot of issue. <laughs> so I guess that's some kind of bug. It did work well in his presentation. However, here it's not working so great. Um, so you know what? I'm actually going to take that back for the moment. We'll come back uh, later on in when everything is fixed. <laughs> okay. All right. So now that Dissolve is based off this map. And like I said, uh, you would want to have a custom map um, that you'd create yourself. Maybe not a simple noise texture. However, we can play around with what we have. We can play around with the UV of this simple noise. Um, to make it look a little bit better 
and he actually did that in the video by creating a new position property and instead of using the well property he would go on and use say the object property so the object space and he output that directly in the UV which actually changed things quite a lot now let's have a look at what this gives us well when it's on zero it gives us nothing but you can start dissolving at very specific point uh, using the center of our mesh so in this case where's my pivot point uh, somewhere over here I would say so it gives it, it gives it a more unified dissolve effect and and resolve effect let's call it like that um, however he went even further than that and actually added a twill effect so we can play around with that even more with a twill and twill is really cool when you just have a look at it you can see that your texture is about to get messed up so let's go ahead and put that right in here and I'll put it there and this is what we end up with which is a lot cooler so let's have a look at that directly in the game all dissolve is actually done with these lines and that's because the step function looks like that now all right so you just play around with this you get an actual different texture from what we had before and it can look a lot better it can look a lot worse depending on how good you are with this uh, if we just go with big stripe like that, I'm going to save this and here we go. So we have something of the sort. And you can see that there is the opportunity to do a lot of cool effect with this. And as I've mentioned, we are going to be exploring that more and more um, fairly soon on the channel. Especially this Saturday, we have a live stream in which we're going to be looking at these things together and figuring some very, very cool effect. So if you're down for that, uh, join us on Saturday. Uh, quickly before I go, um, I kept yelling myself something while he was doing it. Um, I hate to move the slider. Let's actually put that on a time. Um, if you guys have been watching the, the old shader vi video I've done, um, we actually went around and we played around with the time function. So let's add that in here. Is there time? Yes, of course, there is a time. And you can put the sin time on that and watch that change fast not fast but as time appears so you don't even have to do anything with this however um, for this I think you'll go at minus one and then one so there's like a there's a good amount of time when there's nothing because the value goes to minus one and then up to one which by the way could be resolved if you do a little bit of mathematics so how do we resolve this small issue we just created well for one we could take that number and actually add it by one so let's add it by a vector uh, I just want to have a simple number basic there it is so add we could add this value by a 1 which now gives us an output of 0 and 2 now we also have an issue here where 2 is too much um, this only takes in between 0 and 1 so you would divide that again by 2 in that case uh, it's a bit complicated the way I explain it I'm not the best at explaining this apparently um, but let's multiply that Take the same output and then say 0 0.5. Okay, replace that output. And here we go. So we have the effect running at all time. It should run at all time. Okay. That's, uh, that's what it is. So we now have a time-based shader, guys. And we don't have to do anything but look at it go while we edit our scene. Um, not that it's useful. I just wanted to show you a little bit more beyond what he's done. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new tool. This new tool is awesome. And I will be digging so much deeper on that on Saturday. We'll actually go and explore what we can do with this. Um, so, yeah, I hope to see you there. I hope you subscribe, hit the like button, do all that kind of stuff. That keeps this channel running. And I will see you guys really soon. Cheers.